the lesson of World War II was that the battleship, the great ship of the line, which was in the same lineage as Nelson's victory, had seen the end of its day and an entirely new technology had appeared to replace it. Until World War II, the battleship was the ship that had shaped history. Her command of the seas was won by sheer power, power of speed, of endurance, and above all, of firepower, an ability to give and take punishment in equal measure. Naval thinking throughout the early part of the 20th century had been dominated by lessons the battleship had taught a hundred years earlier. Through the 19th century, the British had established control of the world seas without clearly formulating a national policy of exactly what they were doing. And curiously enough, it turned out to be an American who finally explained to them, in retrospect, what they had done. An American naval officer, Alfred Thayer Mahan, started to believe not that naval warfare is decisive, but that it can have an enormous influence on the outcome of that conflict. And it was he who first saw that in order to achieve your military objectives at sea, you want to have what he called command of the sea. And Mahan believed that the way the British won command of the sea was to bring the enemy to bear in a decisive engagement between the main battle fleet. And when you had defeated the enemy fleet in that decisive engagement, then you were free to use the sea however you wanted. And he believed that would help shape the course of history on land. Ironically, he convinced most of the world's great maritime nations to adopt his view of sea power at just the time the technology was undermining the historical model he'd used. His model fit perfectly what had happened in the great age of sail. But now there were new technologies around that were calling into question the hierarchy of power, the invulnerability of the ship of the line. The site where more than 1,100 men lie entombed in the USS Arizona is a somber but fitting place to end the story of the battleship. For it is here, if anywhere, that the dream of the big gun battleship as the ultimate warrior began to die. Her big guns would be needed as the war turned and the enemy was driven back. She served honorably in Korea, Vietnam, and the Persian Gulf. But from that fateful Sunday morning in Pearl Harbor, the days of the dreadnought were numbered. Warship was made possible by the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation to enhance public understanding of the role of technology. The foundation also seeks to portray the lives of the men and women engaged in scientific and technological pursuit. <laughs>